I ask you to help me welcome Professor Benjamin Fogstead conducting the Bethany Lutheran College Concert Band. Thanks for being with us today. Well, good afternoon. It's great to be here. I'm Ben Fogsta. I serve as chair of the music department at Bethany Lutheran College. I conduct the concert band, chamber orchestra, and drum line. The students here, a number of them are involved in multiple ensembles, and we very much encourage that at Bethany. Um, what they learn in these other ensembles helps strengthen than this one that they're in. So if you're also in concert choir, would you stand and percussion, you could wave. 
Great, thank you. Uh, are you also in chamber orchestra? Go ahead and stand, wave. Thank you. Uh, our handbell choir, if you're a part of that. Thank you. Um, how about drumline? Part of drumline. That's cool. Thank you. Uh, jazz. Are you in our jazz band? Nice. And we just had our winter musical. It was My Fair Lady. If you are a part of that, go ahead and stand or wave. Cool. Thank you. Uh, in summary, if you're in two or more ensembles, go ahead and, and raise your hand. Three or more. Four or more. Five. And that's the most. Those four are in six. Five. <laughs> five of you. <laughs> you're, you're in all five. That's great. Uh, just out of curiosity, everybody out here, who's in band? Would you raise your hand if you're in band? Whoa! How big is your band? It's big. <laughs> That's awesome. How many are in choir? Wow. All right. And then uh, how many are... You, it's Bye Bye Birdie, right? That's your musical. How many are in that production? Wow. That is so cool. Okay. So you get the arts. That's awesome. So we've got three hymns that we're going to play for you, and, and you can actually wait, and it, you could clap at the last hymn. That'll be towards the end of the program. So this first one is part of the, these Holy Week hymns, and we're going to start off, we're going to feature the brass, and then the whole band will then join in. So here's Hosanna, loud Hosanna. So our next selection is called Nostalgia. This is by Rosano Gallant, and he, he does an incredible job with how he utilizes repetition. We know in music how powerful repetition is. That's what really helps move it along, but you don't want to keep repeating the same thing. So what he does is he presents an idea, and then it, you maybe then hear it in a different instrument, or there's different harmonies connected with it, or there's some other percussion that's part of it. So this selection, uh, he just does an outstanding job and nostalgia, you know, you're thinking back to beautiful, wonderful past memories. So as this piece is unfolding, maybe it kind of rekindles some of those. So here's nostalgia.
So you've got the program in front of you. You can see each of the students' names here. This is not our entire band. This is 32. It's our spring break, so it's optional for these guys to go out on tour. There's uh, a number of them that they have a terrible excuse to not be here. They're in Italy, so I just I don't understand. They could have gone to Iowa and South Dakota, but they're going to Italy. So, um, But it's great. Uh, in the program here, this group comes from all sorts of different backgrounds. So yes, we've got music majors and an assortment of all other majors, and that's listed in your program. For our next selection, I want to invite a couple of students forward to introduce this. So Nora and Claire, would you come forward? They'll introduce our next selection. Hi, guys. I, <laughs> I feel like I should be telling you about throwing your gum wrappers away or like, I don't know. <laughs> Um, anyway, so the next song is, oh wait, no, no, I'm Claire, <laughs> I'm Nora, and um, we just graduated last year, so for everybody who doesn't know us, yeah. Okay, so for the next selection, it's based on a quote uh, by T.E. Lawrence. He's also called Lawrence of Arabia, he was a British explorer. Um, so he says, all men dream, but not equally. Those who dream by night in the dusty recesses of their minds wake in the day to find that it was vanity. But the dreamers of the day are dangerous men, for they may act on their dreams with open eyes to make them possible. My boy's kind of scary. Okay, this text, oh, the composer writes, this text has served as an inspiration to me since first reading it. I have often thought of it as an excellent message for people of all ages. No matter how young or old, it always is the time to be curious, to approach life as an adventure, and to invite new experiences with a sense of childlike wonder. To dream with open eyes captures the sense of wonder, imagination, and possibility that turns dreams into reality. The best dreams are the ones you live by day with open eyes. Before we play it, I always think about when Mac Miller says, follow your dreams, but that's just me.
So we were over at St. Martin's School just before this. We performed for them from 12.45 to 1.45, then packed everything up quickly, and then got over here. Uh, at the school, uh, we shared something. I think it's, it's kind of cool to note. Uh, I think some will start playing in fifth grade or sixth grade in the band, and maybe if they didn't get a chance to start playing then, then they're like, well, there's no way I could be a part of a college ensemble at any point. What was interesting is I kind of surveyed the band in front of the crowd, and they shared when they started playing. And I think it's really interesting uh, looking at fifth grade. If you started in fifth grade as early as fifth grade, all right, you start in sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, okay, ninth grade. I started in ninth grade. Tenth grade, eleventh grade, twelfth. Did you start your freshman year of college? Sophomore year of college. Okay, so. I think that's pretty cool. I, at any point in time, get in on music. Don't think that you missed that opportunity. You really could at any point. Our next selection, this is another Holy Week hymn. This is a setting by Johann Sebastian Bach. Do we know the, the years for Johann Sebastian Bach? When was he born? When did he die? Do you, do you know? Who knows? Anybody? 1685 to... 1750? Nope, 1750, just straight up 1750. <laughs> that was nice, good job. Uh, so this is Oh Sacred Head Not Wounded. We're gonna feature our flute section first and then the whole band. Our next selection is Novo Lenio, but just before introducing it, I had the, the joy of traveling to England this last summer. Uh, 14 Bethany students with, went with me. A number of the students in this band were part of that two-week study tour. Got to travel all around southern England. And as part of that, we went to Oxford, and I, I came across a lecture there by C.S. Lewis. I'm sure C.S. Lewis rings a bell, probably known most for Chronicles of Narnia. But he did a lecture there, and it was on the topic of, does beauty matter when bombs start to fall? And his conclusion in that lecture, he came up with three main points. Um, the, the first one, he talked about cave paintings. And he said, if we waited for peace to create art, the first cave paintings would have yet to be made. There's always some imminent danger, yet somehow culture begins, culture breaks through. The second point that he made was about insect life versus human life. And he said, the insects have chosen a different line. They have sought first the security and welfare of the hive, 
and presumably they have their reward. But men are different. We desire not just mere continuity, but variety, growth, and adventure. The last point that he makes I'll share after this next selection, so Novo Lenio by Samuel Hazo. There's three movements to it, but they kind of move seamlessly one into the next. The first, it's about a school in Pennsylvania, and it's the old school and kind of walking through the halls one last time before the demolition takes place. The second movement is that demolition, and then the third movement is that new beginning, that new school and that wonderful future that's in front of them. Here's Novo Lenio.
So going back to C.S. Lewis's lecture at the start of World War II, does beauty matter when bombs start falling? He makes then this third and final point. He says, the soul feeds on truth and beauty like the body feeds on food. God makes no appetite in vain. We can therefore pursue knowledge and beauty in the sure confidence that by so doing, we are either advancing to the vision of God ourselves or indirectly helping others to do so. Wise words from C.S. Lewis. So there's this fellow over here, fantastically dressed. He's got this bow tie and everything. Well, we're going to have him come on up and conduct a selection. He had his conducting debut a little over a week ago in Minnesota. Then a few days ago, his conducting debut in Iowa. So now this is his South Dakota conducting debut. Would you please join me in welcoming Darian Rosenthal. Our next selection is Song for Terra. It was written by Yukiko Nishimura. And the uh, original intent for the composer when writing this piece was to write a piece of, uh, or song of peace for the earth. Hence, you know, the name Song for Terra. And so what I like to imagine, what I like to envision when I hear this piece is that I'm walking out and it's sunset and there's not a sound except for birds chirping. Just quiet at peace, alone with the earth. Song for Tara.
Our next selection is Metamorphosis. This is by Andrew Boysen Jr. And this, I think, speaks to that transformative power of music. And seeing so much of you are involved with band, choir, or musical, uh, you understand that it has such an incredible impact for you, not just now, but certainly for years to come. So uh, just a fantastic selection, Metamorphosis.
Well, thank you all so much for having us here this afternoon. I think it's a fun way to end a Friday. Two um, short selections remaining. Uh, I do want to share uh, on the back page of the program, you can see there's music scholarships available and those details are present there. You can see what our music alumni has done. So somebody like Darian Rosenthal, for example, he's training to, be, uh, to get a bachelor's degree in music and conducting the band and doing an awesome job. So um, there's also honors events too. And we have a new one this October, the second Saturday in October, an honor choir. And then the second Saturday in November, as a number of you were a part of, is our fall honor band. So those two are opportunities for you. This last hymn, this is Jesus Christ is Risen Today, so those Holy Week hymns, this concludes it, and we're going to feature that clarinet section, followed by the whole band. So just prior to our last selection, which will be The Thunderer by John Philip Sousa, I'd like to inv invite forward our Director Ad of Admissions. This is Estelle Flieger. Please welcome her. Okay, we're going to do that. Um, yes, thank you guys so much for um, having me here today. I saw many of you out in the hallway. Um, thank you for shortening your classes and giving us time at the end for having the band come and play. Um, this is really special for me. I don't know, I'm a Stell Flieger, but many, there are a few of you in the hall who would know me back in the day as a Stell Tesh. Um, I can tell them this now because you guys are done at St. Martin's. Um, I graduated actually from St. Martin's, so I was baptized and confirmed over there. So it wasn't that long ago that I was sitting where you guys um, were over there as well. So, um, But just wanted to thank you guys for letting us come. Bethany really is a special place. Um, you can talk to any of the students up here, um, and it's always a pleasure to get to bring them out um, to see you guys. I wish I could take all of you to campus to get to see us. Um, but this is kind of the next best thing. But you do have a schedule of some of the other concerts and certainly check out the website because we would love to have any of you um, on campus. And if there is an event you're coming for, please just let me know. Um, and I can certainly work on getting you tickets and passes and things um, so that you have that. And then I'm also gonna bring up um, another member of our staff, Jake Creer, who has just a couple words for you guys as well. Thank you, Estelle. My um, name is Jake Kerr. I'm the Director of Alumni Relations at Bethany. So I'm kind of on, on the work here today, kind of visiting our alumni. We have almost 10,000 of them. And I would say probably one of the most special things about my job is daily, I get to talk to people that had kind of the Bethany experience. They got to come to our school, take classes, kind of learn things, how they're making their mark, kind of learning a job and earning those skills, but then also how they get involved. Almost 100% of our Bethany students get involved in something whether it be music, the theater, athletics, mock trial team speech, I get to hear about their memories and how the college made a difference with that. And then also probably the most important thing is how daily on, on campus they got to hear about the Lord. 
his teachings, his promise, and that was at the center of the Bethany education. And really, that's, and I think you guys kind of understand that at Great Plains, too. That's very much why you guys chose to come here. So if you guys have any questions about Bethany, I'd be happy to answer them. I also look out into the audience. I see several kind of alumni, friends of the college. If you guys have any questions about Bethany, I'll be around and happy to answer them. But I just want to thank our friends at Great Plains for having us, for allowing us to showcase our talented students, and we really appreciate it. And I wish you guys all a blessed Easter season, and I continue to wish you the Lord's blessings as well. Thank you. Is there anybody that has to say something in closing to the school day? Uh, what time is it? We've got five minutes. Do you, do you want to ask any questions? Okay. Thank you. Have a great weekend.